Well, Josh Sargent is having himself a season for Norwich. 15 goals across 24 matches for the championship side. He has scored seven in his last 10. And yesterday, Nico and Alexis had a chance to catch up with the very informed U.S. striker. Here it is. So excited for this interview. Josh, welcome to Morning Footy. How you been? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Tell me, how's life in Norwich? Uh, not bad. I mean, you know, going for a playoff push at the moment. Um, things are looking pretty good, so hopefully we can keep it up these last four matches. You've got 15 goals and 22 appearances, but since the start of February, you've got 10 goals. You've gotten hot at the moment. You're the hottest striker in England, regardless of division. You're putting up numbers that Holland isn't putting up, my guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm obviously very happy with my performance at the moment, but uh, got to give credit to the team, you know, playing well and putting me in the right positions to score goals. Uh, a teammate of yours, Ashley Barnes, recently said that you are the best player on the team. Come on now, the St. Louis in you. Have your chest pop out a little bit. What do you think that does <laughs> for your confidence moving forward and getting yourself into that playoff push? Yeah, I mean, a player like him who's obviously been in the Prem for a while, um, you know, hearing that from him is obviously very good for my confidence. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just got to keep doing what, you know, I feel like I've been doing for a while now, just keep my head down and working hard. And, yeah, everything will work out the right way. Josh, you've got an American coach. I think we can claim him as American, right? He's got a couple caps for the national team. I don't know why. Well, no, like, he's doing well. Yes, he's American. Raw, raw <laughs> him as, 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 I mean, David Wagner, how, how important has he been to your success and how much of a fit has it been with you in, in his system? I mean, yeah, I think right when he came in, he made it clear that, you know, I'm just going to be a striker in his system. And before that, there was never really a clear position for me. It was kind of a second striker or winger um, at Bremen in my first you know, year or so at Norwich even. So when he came in and told me that, and I knew in my head I could you know, fully focus on that position again, you know, the position I've been playing since I was a kid, um, it made me very happy, obviously, and I've just been able to improve each game. And I feel like I'm yeah, in a very good spot right now, so I give a lot of credit to him. The uh, team that's chasing you right now in the standings is Coventry City. They're playing very, very well. A lot of us remember them from that playoff uh, sort of uh, heartache that they had last season. They're trying to get back in those playoffs once again. There's an American playing on there, Haji Wright. I don't know if y'all be, you know, texting a little bit here and there, maybe WhatsApping. <laughs> I don't know what y'all do, DMs. Has the, what have the conversations been like between the two of you? Um, reached out to me before he came to the championship, you know, just asking about the league in general and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, don't text a lot, you know, day to day, but we'll keep up with each other. We'll say, you know, good goal or good job, whatever it is. Like text texted him after, uh, I forget which cup game it was, where he scored a pretty late goal, I think it was. And anyways, won them the game. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're both scoring goals and doing well right now. So we're both happy for each other. He doesn't ask about you know, team you might have just played that he's about to play and you don't give him false advice? No, no <laughs> of course not. <laughs> you gotta Nothing get him. like that, no. All right. Josh, uh, the championship is absolutely nuts. It's on crack, honestly. It's, it's unpredictable. Millwall lost to a team that's already been relegated recently and then is able to beat Leicester. Like, it's, uh, like don't bet. On the championship, I, we like both that. Right now, in our <laughs> betting segment. Well, wh wh why is that so? How come? How come it, it's so tough from from first to last? Yeah, it's just so many different types of styles you play against. So many um, games in general. Like you're playing every three days, basically, and you know it's hard to catch up. Sometimes you don't have you know 100 percent in your legs, and yeah, just weird things happen in this league, and it's tight all the way from the top to the bottom at the moment. Josh, I, what I want to know specifically is I remember the moment uh, Norwich gets relegated. I'm gutted, gutted for you as a, for the opportunity from the Premier League. But it seems you've taken this opportunity to really develop even more in your game. Obviously, the coach having a lot more confidence and putting you in a position to score and succeed is great. What do you think, just personally, what do you think you've developed being in such a tough competition, like Nico said? Um, yeah, I mean, you got to be on it, you know, every game. Like, like you guys said, you never know 
what type of team, whether it's last or first place, they're always going to give you a challenge. So you really got to be mentally sharp every single game and prepared for, you know, the game ahead of you. Josh, let's transition over to talk about the national team because you were on the list for camp for Nations League, but because of injury, you weren't able to make it. What have the conversations been like with Berhalter, given that the number nine position is kind of still up for grabs? So much can change from here on to, to, to World Cup 2026 with so much competition in that position. Just, just to keep working and doing what I'm doing, honestly. I mean, obviously, I was very upset that I wasn't able to join the guys in camp. Um, but just been dealing with this ankle that's been, you know, lingering on for a while now. And to be honest, having that little break seems to have done it, you know, a really good job because it's feeling like it's in a really good place at the moment. So, you know, as, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing here at, you know, club level, I feel like, you know, I, I deserve to be back in with the team uh, in the summer. Obviously, you take the, you know, the game at the club level extremely serious. I know how much, how hard it is you play and work and train to score for Norwich, get Norwich back in the Premier League. In the back of your mind is that the fact that what Hanico said, it, you know, nothing's really set in stone when it comes to the national team. Is that in the back of your mind? Because you've really been putting on some amazing performances. Yeah, I mean, I always want to be with national team anytime I can. And unfortunately, just due to injuries and whatnot, um, just haven't been able to get with the guys so you know it's been a while I'm playing really well and again if I keep doing what I'm doing here I feel like there's no reason I shouldn't be with them hey the next time you score with the with the national team by the way Josh we have Charlie Davies on our on our desk for morning footy so he hit us with that stanky leg in the Azteca. You got you, you got to give us a, an iconic. So that was a really bad. Stanky that was. Leg. That I was can already a, see. Yeah, that was more of a stanky hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can already see Charlie uh, reacting to that. But Josh, you you got you got to give us an iconic celebration. You got anything planned? Oh no, I don't. You're putting me under pressure here. <laughs> um, maybe just the normal salute, but I'm not much of a dancer myself. Yeah. <laughs> nice. may, Google Stanky like it's a perform before your time, but I would love to see you try. I think it'll be better than Nico's. Um, I want to I want to ask you a question that might be a little personal. My wife is a redhead, much much like yours. I. Uh, <laughs> When I never thought of this, I'm Latino. She said she got made fun of growing up for having red hair. I said, what are you kidding me? You know, this is like exotic to us. You know, you're like Rihanna in the hood. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how exotic you are with red hair. In England, when we went there, she got made fun of relentlessly for it. I thought I was going to have to fight everyone in England. Did you get made fun of for having red hair or being a ginge, as they like to say? Yeah, pretty much it's a daily occurrence here. So uh, yeah, I get a lot of crap for that. <laughs> what do they say? I don't even know. Just like you said, just call me Ginge, whatever it is. Like, <laughs> just trying to throw in little jabs every second they can. Jeez. Going back to the national team, yeah. Josh, World Cup, talk to me what that experience was like. I mean, not too many people have the great fortune of playing at the biggest dance. And you walked out in that opening match for the U.S. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I know it's cliche, but it's really a dream come true. You know, it's it's something you think about ever since you're a little kid. And uh, yeah, I just remember walking out of that tunnel onto the pitch for the first match. It was it was like in career mode, you know, when you're walking out onto a pitch yeah. or whatever it is, NBA, whatever you're playing. And <laughs> it was just a surreal moment. And uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously, you know, such a cool thing I get to tell my kids in the future or whoever it is, you know, that I played in a World Cup. Now, I want to ask something that's more personal to you in the sense of where you're from. I mentioned it before, St. Louis area. It's a hard scrabble town. You know what I mean? That's a that's a tough place to be from. I'm sure it's it's helped you develop a, a tough outer shell for playing in England. What do you think about the development of the sport in St. Louis? It's grown in tremendously, obviously, with St. Louis City, um, uh, you know, being just super successful there. What are your thoughts on what's happening in the soccer scene there? And two, do you think having such terrible pizza like Emos prepared you for the food in England? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, taking shots. Do not say that. Yeah, that's a bit aggressive. <laughs> but uh, no, St. Louis has always had such a big, you know, soccer culture, I think. And, uh, you know, getting the MLS team, it's only getting better and better and I've seen videos and see the atmosphere is absolutely amazing there and uh, yeah it's just going to keep getting better hopefully Josh, and, don't uh, be so nice to this guy with his full yeah, taste I mean come you've on, had clap back and by at the him. way Provel, Emos, come on. you cannot you know talk crap on Emos it's a <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my bad it's quality pizza <laughs> <laughs> it's all right i'll let I'll, I'll i'll let you have pizza but the word quality I'm, I'm gonna put an asterisk on that one. Yeah, uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> I mean, we mentioned MLS. My last question for you is is about filling in for for Timu Puki because he's pretty much a Norwich legend and he left the team. He's he's now Major League Soccer, but uh, how difficult has that kind of been? It's like you said, David Wagner has got you playing the nine, the position that he had on on Norwich. Yeah, he's you know Timu was a great guy while he was here and obviously achieved amazing things and. You know, I'm just trying to make my own way. I don't want to compare myself to him or anything like that. I'm just, uh, you know, like I said, just kind of putting my head down, working hard and trying to do, you know, better each game, really. So it's going well so far this season and hopefully, you know, it can continue. All right. Let us let the fans know. Obviously, there's a lot of Americans watching this show and they're rooting for you. Let them know what they should expect from Norwich in these playoffs. Oof, I think. I think it's going to be good stuff. I think, you know, we're on a good roll at the moment. We've had a lot of confidence lately and, you know, our goal is to get promoted. So I think there's, you know, good things ahead for us. Nice. If you, if you guys make, if you get promoted, I'll ship you some, uh, some uh, Emo's pizza. <laughs> I don't know oh, if they're allowed to go. ship it in the mail because Provel, I think it's illegal to send that, but we'll, we'll, we'll try. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> Josh, before we let you go, talk to me a little bit about, about Copa America. I mean, you're, Madness in the championship to then madness in the Copa America. How do you feel uh, this tournament's going to be for yourself, but mostly for the U.S. as well? Yeah, it's obviously massive. Um, just going to try to take care of business here, do the best I can. And, you know, like I said, if I do that, hopefully, you know, it gets me a ticket to the team and to the Copa America. And I think everybody's looking forward to it. It's such a massive tournament. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, we can impress and do some good things there. Nice. Well, we're excited to watch you play and, and what's left of the championship. If you guys aren't watching, you, you got to check out this finish because it's yeah. bound to be exciting. And then everything that's to come for the Copa America. Josh, we hope to see you at Copa America and, and keep on killing it at Norwich. Thanks.